In much of Italy, the term bracciole refers to meat that's pounded thin then rolled up with a filling. The neat thing is that styles of bracciole vary wildly from region to region. Everything's up for grabs. The meat can be beef, pork, or veal. The fillings run the gamut from fresh herbs to hard boiled eggs. And even the cooking method can be anything from braising or roasting to grilling. So the question is, what style are we making today, Dan? So we're making the delicious style. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so we're gonna make really small little rolls, beautiful little packets. Everyone gets an individual one. It's mm. gonna be braised in this gorgeous tomato sauce. But we're gonna pack it with a ton of really Really, really big flavor. Okay. So we're gonna start here with our filling. We've got three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Into that, I'm gonna add five minced cloves of garlic. We've got three anchovies that are minced, add so much depth and savoriness. Mm -hmm. We've got two teaspoons of grated lemon zest. You weren't kidding about added flavor. No. Garlic, anchovy, lemon zest. Pow, pow, pow. Right off the top. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just gonna stir this together and then we're gonna add some herbs. So we have a third of a cup of fresh chopped basil and a third of a cup of chopped fresh parsley. And we have a third of a cup of pecorino romano. Mm. A lot of salt, a lot of, a lot of good funk to it, and then a third of a cup of just plain breadcrumbs. Okay. This is gonna help bind everything together. And these are just the store-bought breadcrumbs. These aren't homemade breadcrumbs. Just store-bought, they're great here. So I'm gonna stir this together as well. Beautiful, and then I have three ounces of grated fontina cheese. Mm, a good melter. Good melter, exactly. So we've got our flavor and funk from the pecorino romano, and then we've got good melting from the fontina. And just stir this together. Off to a promising start. I know, you want a spoon? You can <laughs> I kinda spoon, do. right in here. <laughs> awesome, so I'll set this aside. That is our beautiful filling. So next up, we get to the beef, and we are using a gorgeous flank steak for this. Mm. You're looking for about two pounds, a little over two pounds is fine. And you don't often think of it as a braising cut, but it's got a fair amount of collagen in it that breaks down and gets nice and tender, and it's really, really beefy, so it's, it's actually beautiful for this. So the first step is to have this crosswise like this. And then for each of these, I'm going to butterfly them so they're about half the thickness. It's gonna make our pounding out a lot easier. Uh -huh. We're starting with something thinner. All right. So what I like to do is bring it right to the edge of the board here with the grain running like this and make that initial cut right through and then you kind of peel it back up. Again, keeping your knife nice and parallel and dragging it through. And then I even actually like to hang it over the edge a little bit as I go. Oh wow. It really allows you to stay parallel to it as opposed to having to start angle as you go. And then I just come in again. That is a really clever technique, Dan. Oh, I'm glad you like it. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with the second one. So we have nice thin pieces of steak, but they're not thin enough for what we want. So I'm gonna set three of them aside, work with one at a time and pound it out. We're looking for about a quarter inch thick on this. So I just cover with plastic wrap. So good and thin. Good and thin, exactly. We're gonna roll it and you, you, know, you really want it to be nice and thin and super tender. Uh, meat pounder, I love this style here. You, you can basically use it, you know, like you're pounding your fist on something and then I'm just gonna pound it out. So that's great. So I'm just gonna repeat that with these other three. Okay, okay. So we've got our nice pounded steaks here. And for each one of these, I'm gonna cut it in half going with the grain. Because flank steak has a distinct grain that runs in one direction. That's right. So we're gonna make eight total pieces. So I'm gonna prep my station out for rolling these and I'm gonna tie each one with two pieces of twine. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna set that out ahead of time here. So you talked about that grain, it is super important the direction you go in. And so that means we want the grain to be this way, parallel to the board. All right, great, so I'm gonna add half the filling to these four here. I'm just gonna spread it pretty evenly across it. So the final layer before we roll these up is a beautiful thin piece of prosciutto. Mm. So obviously this is gonna add tons of saltiness, fattiness, funk, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a beautiful thing. A little bit of pork. A, just a little bit of pork. Awesome, so now it's time to roll. So we're gonna start on this end and roll away from ourselves. Just like this. All right, so nice and tight. Nice and tight. All right. And then when you get to the end, we've already got our strings on there, so we can just go right around. And I like to do a little double. Double. I think I tied mine tight enough. You're tying them pretty tight. Obviously, they'll shrink as they cook. You don't want them to unroll, so. I think you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. And we'll go back and just trim off our ends. So we have nice, neat little packages. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna transfer these over here and give myself room to do the other four. Okie doke. So I've got a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil heating over medium high heat in this pot. We're just getting it to shimmering basically. Okay. 
And in the meantime, I'm gonna season up these rolls with a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. We didn't put any salt or pepper in the filling, but that's probably because that cheese is pretty salty. A lot of times I can be pretty heavy handed when I'm seasoning meat and we wanna be a little careful here. All right, so we're gonna get all of these into it. It's gonna be nice and snug, but we're gonna brown them for about eight to 10 minutes, flipping halfway through or as needed to get really good browning on all sides. They're all gonna fit in the pan. They're all gonna fit in the pan. Really? Right, this I've gotta watch. <laughs> well, I wanna see how you organize them. Oh, I see. You're totally gonna fit them all in. Right? My goodness. Like a challenge. So we're gonna go for about eight to 10 minutes. We're looking for great browning on two sides. Mm -mm. Smelling good. It smells great, right? So we've got beautiful browning. We're gonna get these out. We're gonna go right back onto the same tray we used. They're gonna keep cooking later, so it's totally safe. Ooh, look at that fond in the bottom of the pot. That's so much flavor right there. Mm-hmm. Great, now we're gonna go in with one large chopped onion. We're gonna cook this until it's nice and soft, about five to seven minutes. At the same time, I'm gonna move it around a lot and use it to scrape up some of that pond. Okay, our onions are beautiful and softened. They picked mm -hmm. up a ton of that fond. So we're gonna keep building some flavor. We've got a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Mm-hmm, no heat. And we've got five tablespoons of minced garlic. Some more garlic. A little more garlic, <laughs> yep. So up to 11 cloves total so far? I think it's 10. <laughs> it's not that I'm counting. I'm gonna cook this just until fragrant, which is happening already. Mm, it smells good. Takes about 30 seconds. And then we're going with a quarter of a cup of tomato paste. About three or four minutes and get nice browning on it. Yeah, by browning tomato paste, even for an extra minute or two, you really deepen the flavor of whatever sauce you're making. Time for a little bit of wine. We've got three quarter cups of red wine here. Mmm. This is gonna be a deep flavored sauce. Oh yeah. I also love how you built up a really nice fond around the rim of the pan, and now you can scrape it all off the wine. Now we're gonna add a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Okay. And we've got two cups of beef broth. Really reinforce that beef flavor. Okay, we're gonna get our rolls in there now. Okay, so it's up to a simmer, which is awesome. We're gonna cover this now. And we're gonna braise in the oven. So mm -hmm. I have a 325 degree oven, two and a half to three hours. We're looking for fork tender. And we're gonna flip them halfway through. Okay. Oh, the aroma coming from this oven is unmistakable. That's so good. Oh, oh, goodness. Beautiful. All right, so you need to be really careful. These are fork tender when you're taking them out and transferring them. Oh, I can see in your tongs, they're right? just squeezable. Just beautiful and tender. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this twine off. So I've gotten all those strings off. Now mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish up our sauce. So we've got another two tablespoons of chopped fresh basil. Ah, oh, freshen up that sauce a little bit. Exactly. So I'm gonna stir that in and then we'll do a little taste for seasoning. Mm. Doesn't need any more salt. I'm gonna just do a little bit of pepper in there. And I will ladle our sauce over the top. Oh, beautiful. Can I serve you one Please. or two maybe? How about two? Thank you. Great, and there's a little bit of extra Pecorino Romano if you'd like to finish with that. Oh, All right, let's I dig can't in. wait to dive into this. It doesn't even need a knife. I know, right? It's so tender. Mmm. Oh, mm. you get the beef, the cheese, oh, a little bit of lemon, the garlic. Oh, man. That is a hearty, hearty dish. It's so good. It's so good. And that flank steak is the perfect cut for this. Mm -hmm. It's super beefy. It's got enough fat to stand up to that long cook. It's really nice. Oh, Dan, this is delicious. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you want to make this classic beef braciole, make a filling with herbs, cheese, and breadcrumbs using flank steak. Carefully cut, pound, and roll the meat into portions and braise until very tender in a simple tomato sauce from America's Test Kitchen, a classic recipe for bracciole. This is a winner.
Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.